Thank you. I don't want to keep you from your uh, fashion show. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'm a runway model. Put down the foam. I'm about to crash and burn. And the home of the to episode 106 of the Hit the Deck podcast, where we talk deck hockey, street hockey, ball hockey, it's hockey in sneakers. And right off the bat, or off the deck, on the deck, right right off the face-off? Yes, this is a hockey podcast. Let's say right off the face-off. I want to say to you, dear listener, I apologize for missing the show last week. I did something stupid and broke my laptop. And so you paid the price. And I apologize, but this week we were able to uh, get going. And so we are back, baby, right here. And uh, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a little old school here. I'm going to go, go bring it, bringing it back. I'm bringing it back to the beginning. And I'm going to change things up and, and I'm going to jump right into our starting lineup so you know who is talking at you right here at the top of the pod. So for tonight's starting lineup, in goal as ever, I am number 35, your American Rhino, Gary McComiskey, and of course, my stalwart co-host. On defense, number four, I'm James Sajazi. The man himself. How are you, James? I'm doing pretty well, thanks. How about yourself? I am not half bad, I have to say. It's been a heck of a couple of weeks. I know it has been for me. I suspect it has been for you as well. Am I right? Yes, you are, sir. I missed the podcast. Yeah, I, I did too. <laughs> I did too. But uh, you know what? Even even if it's for unfortunate reasons, it is nice every once in a while to take a break and recharge the batteries so we can come out of the gates raring to go, supercharged as I seem to be tonight. So, you know, I want to, I, I just, I just want to try and, and get right back on that horse to mix metaphors. Absolutely. And thank you so much. And this is a good lesson to any of you players out there who may be riding the bench for a while. We are relying, well, it's all thanks to the American Rhino that we do this podcast at all, but he has broken out his uh, backup older laptop to record all of this greatness. So just a little lesson to you players out there. If you're not getting the action, you always have to remain like for a backup goalie, for example, you have to <laughs> remain game ready and practice like you're going to play because your number will come up. Yeah, I probably could have done this last week, too, if I'd been thinking clearly, but I was so mad at myself. I just, I, I was disgusted, and I just, like, yeah, can't do it. Oh, well, well. Like you, yeah, but like you usually do, you take the blame when it's not really necessary, but uh, there were a couple of things that went this against This was that entirely pot- my fault last week. No, it, it, it was the final nail in the coffin, we'll put it that way, because that's the truth, because we tried to book a guest and didn't hear back from that person, and that could be my fault, so I'll, I'll take responsibility, and something else came up as well, so it was just like we were snake bitten last week. But uh, dear listener, thank you for bearing with us, and American Rhino, thank you for getting us back on the pod, and if you had a chance to catch up on some episodes you may have missed, that's always a good opportunity, too. Of course. And uh, we hope that you have been well in the intervening time, dear listener. But James, how have you been spending your last two weeks? Anything interesting happen over that time? Uh, yeah, um, finally, well, we'll see, but, um, it looks like I may not be unemployed much longer, which is wonderful. And that's yeah! all thanks, thanks to you wonderful friends of mine out there. God bless you all. And, uh, my friends and family It's a very short list of wonderful, wonderful people. And, uh, hopefully this will all work out. And I just, before I get too mushy, just, I wish everybody could have friends like I do. I don't deserve you guys, but it, I'm sure blessed and grateful to have you in my life. And, and thank you so much for your, especially you, American Rhino, for always being positive and helping me out and being so generous. So that's wonderful. Uh, also, too, it was my brother's birthday. He turned 45 last week, so that was nice. So 
celebrated 45, that. Then. 45, yay, 45. I, I think I've told that story on this podcast before, haven't I, about my I believe, physics professor? Yes, yes. All right, well, <laughs> if you happen to be a new listener, the short version is when I took physics junior year of high school, <laughs> my, uh, my teacher, Dr. Espinoza, uh, had, had, had two things. One, he didn't actually teach us things until after he had already tested us on them, which made it rather difficult to succeed in his class. And uh, two was he was incredibly condescending. He was, I don't know, maybe Colombian. I, I don't remember exactly, but that feels right. But uh, he, he looked down on us quite a bit, I guess, Americans. And uh, he was he was famous uh, for saying one day somebody had asked him if he had watched the hockey game the night before the Rangers game. And his response was that uh, Mark Messier should be arrested because he's paid to assault people. And uh, he also told us that taking extra napkins was stealing. Um, but the, the 45, the famous 45 to which I refer, is um, one day he was going on a rant about the American educational system, of which he was a part, which is, is kind of funny. But um, he, he was saying that uh, America is, or at least at the time was, apparently 45th uh, globally in literacy. Uh, you know, in, in countries, the, America was ranked 45th in, in literacy on the average. So uh, when he heard people chanting USA, 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 what he really heard in his head was people chanting 45, 45, yay, 45. <laughs> and so, you know, I like I don't know why he was lecturing a, a room full of basically honors high school students that, you know, they were not literate enough, but. Whatever. He was kind of a jerk. And uh, I'm, I'm glad I, you know, have never encountered him again. So, uh, Dr. Espinoza, I could say some very unkind things, but as I did go to a Catholic school, I will I will say simply that uh, on the list of teachers that I have had all time, you are at least ranked 45, 45, <laughs> yay, 45. Well done, sir. I don't know if it would have been better if it was 35 for your very <laughs> significant number, but we'll we'll leave it at that. Uh, so how are you? How have you been over the last week or two? I've been pretty well. Let's see. When was the last time that we spoke? Uh, that's going to be two weeks ago. So that would have been right after the Fourth of July. Is that uh, the like the day after the Fourth that we recorded last? Okay. Yes, sir. So we talked about that baseball game on the podcast. Oh, you know what? I I. I do remember doing something that following weekend, I believe. I went into the city for, for something. H have you had any fun plans in the last couple of weeks, James? Oh, that's right. The American Rhino, again, speaking of generosity and what an amazing friend he is, got the most incredible seats I've ever had ever for a certain world wrestling entertainment event. Yes. At Madison Square Garden. So thank you, sir, for that. That was a thrill. Do tell. And uh, did you see anyone interesting there? I'm not stealing your thunder on this, man. Please, <laughs> you, you take it. You got the tickets. You arranged everything. So you found out about it in the first place. So please, sir. All right. All right. Well, as James said, we did go to the WWE show. It was a house show, a live event, which means it wasn't televised. It wasn't like a big pay-per-view or even just a, like a weekly television show. It was just for the entertainment of the people in Madison Square Garden, which is where it occurred, which is the kind of ancestral home of the WWE, even though they don't run that building very often anymore. That is kind of the, you know, if you ask anyone, any of the wrestlers, wrestling at the Garden is kind of a big deal. So uh, there's that. And uh, it was a great show. We, I, I, James and I kind of agreed that we were taken a little by surprise by how good some of the uh, cruiserweights, which is the lighter wrestlers, the smaller, lighter wrestlers, they uh, at least a couple of them put on a match that tore the house down. And that was that was terrific. And Ronda Rousey was there. So I don't know if that's the first time she's competed at Madison Square Garden, but uh, I think she may have been there for UFC once before. I know they did have a show there. I, I don't know if she was on it, but basically it was a, it was a wonderful show. But the the highlight of the night and the reason why James and I went there was uh, the the main event was a six man tag, and five of the six 
well, let's say four, because I do happen to like one of the other wrestlers in there as well. But for all intents and purposes, five of the six men I don't care that much about, and I imagine James didn't care that much about either. But the sixth man in that tag team match, the reason why we were there was somebody very, very near and dear to both James and myself, and that man, of course, was... The Undertaker wrestled at Madison Square Garden, and James and I got to see him right there. And if you follow our Instagram account, you saw a picture of James and I at the Garden that night. The Undertaker was not in that picture. It was taken before the show, but it was cool. And if you are a longtime listener of this podcast, you may recall that after WrestleMania, not this past year, but the last year, after the last WrestleMania, we were lamenting how it seemed The Undertaker was retiring, and I gave this kind of eulogy of his career and, and how it was affecting me and, and what I felt like it meant for uh, I, a whole whole bunch of things. You can go back and track that down if you really want to hear it. But funny story, apparently that's all null and void because he came back this year at WrestleMania and wrestled. And uh, he's wrestled a couple of times since. He, I know he's going to be at a big event in Australia in the fall. And it, I, he's almost certainly going to wrestle at WrestleMania next year. Who knows how long he's he's got left, but he doesn't look like he's going to quit anytime soon. He has a new hip, which, you know, for all intents and purposes, seems to have taken 10 years off his career. He looks great. He's moving as well as I've seen him in a very long time, and he looks like he's enjoying himself. So it's good to have him back, <laughs> I guess. I, I sound like a giddy fanboy, and I guess I am. But, you know, I, I'm, as I said on that podcast last year he, he's been my favorite wrestler for 27 years or whatever now so I I, I just I can't you know I I can't uh, I can't dismiss the dead man that easily so he makes me happy that's all James what were your impressions of that show I've talked for a while no I I, I definitely echo your sentiments and it was a fantastic show it felt like a pay-per-view that's how good it was and yeah, everybody brought his A game, and it was great to see Ronda Rousey. For, I haven't seen her wrestle yet, so that was really exciting, and, and she put on a great show, and as well as the other ladies and, and gentlemen that were fighting there, too. But yeah, exactly, The Undertaker, and he deserves that. He's, he's that good, he's that legendary, he's that amazing, and just to come back. And if that was his farewell at Madison Square Garden, then uh, thank you so, so much, American Rhino, for having us be a part of that. With Those seats were phenomenal. And then just one more thing I just wanted to mention as well is the line of the night was uh, Gary was was explaining to me about Happy Rusev Day. Oh, yes. And dear listener, Happy Rusev Day to you. I I, yes. I was remiss in, in not mentioning it earlier. I'm sorry I forgot. But uh, Happy Rusev Day. Yeah. And, and, and the day after happened to be Gary and, and his lovely wife's anniversary. But apparently Rusev <sighs> Day. I forgot to wish her a Happy Rusev yeah. Day. Oh, okay. Son I think it was more important you wished her a happy end. Yeah, I know. But, you know, you have to have your priorities in, 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 in check. And you can't just forget about Rusev Day just because it's also my anniversary. You know, you have to render respect there. Well, thank you for informing me of that. Machka! But the highlight of the night besides The Undertaker was a, a gentleman was running up the steps to go to concessions or whatever the case was. And he well, yells yeah, it out. Was, it was like a kind of a boring match. I guess, and, and the crowd was getting a little restless. So a couple of guys were walking up the steps, as you said, I guess, to go concessions or whatever. And as, as they walked up the aisle, go ahead. No, please, you take it. As, as they walked up the aisle, they just kind of casually, happy Rusev Day, everybody. Yeah, but your response was the best. I said, and to you, sir, because it seemed only polite. <laughs> Without missing a beat. Well, you know. If somebody wishes you a Merry Christmas, uh, Merry Christmas, you return the sentiment, you know, uh, happy 4th of July, happy 4th of July, happy oh, Rusev Day, and to you, you know. It just, it was perfect, so I don't know what happened for the rest of that match, because I was laughing too hard, but the American Rhino definitely delivered again, <laughs> and you, sir. <laughs> Fantastic. I, I, I don't think it was that big of a deal, but, but I'm, I'm glad I could entertain you, James. Yeah, your timing is spectacular and your delivery is even better. All right, if you say so. Anything else interesting happened in the last couple of weeks? It's been a while. <laughs> I can't uh, remember. Have you played any? I haven't played deck in for I don't know how long. I've practiced, but haven't played. Have you guys had a chance to get out there? 
I played last weekend. It was very hot. I was not very good. That's all I'd prefer to say on the topic. All right. Well, maybe we should just jump into the rest of the podcast. Then. All right. Well, you know, if if you want to do it, then let's do it. All right. And uh, since you brought it up, I'm going to put you to work, though. So um, if you're cool with it, James, could I impress upon you to please tell us what is on deck for this podcast? Would be honored to do my little part Thank to this you. podcast. Power play. Playing hockey on wheels instead of blades or sneakers is nothing new. However, a tournament known as the Power Hockey Cup takes it to a whole other level. Summer shootout, shout out. Over the last few weeks, Gary and I have been subtly spreading the word about great friend of the podcast, Kevin Frost's deck tournament, the 2018 Raleigh Street Hockey League Summer Shootout. It's this Saturday, July 21st, and thanks to Mr. Stan Gilliland's Facebook post, we have the schedule to get you set for all of the action. And gear bag. With all of this tournament talk, you just may need to know where to get equipment. The American Rhino tells us about his new goalie sneakers he picked up from HagenHockey.com. And that's what's on deck. Thank you, James. You're welcome, sir. Pow, pow, power play. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what? I, I would like to see hockey played on power wheels. Hey, maybe that's this is the step towards that. So uh, this is a really amazing story and something really awesome. And just, again, what Gary and I are trying to do with this podcast is to spread the word of hockey and deck hockey and all forms of hockey, mm -hmm. whatever it may be. And there's uh, something called power hockey where these men and women, boys and girls, there's, there's really no age limit. But if you are in a wheelchair that is electric powered, you know, you're not guiding the wheelchair yourself. Uh, actually, Gary and I even have a friend who uses a uh, power wheelchair as well. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of near and dear to our hearts in, in that aspect. But this is a, it's kind of a form of deck hockey, but all these wonderful, brave, great human beings are in electric wheelchairs and they're playing hockey. And it's, it's really fantastic. So every two years they have the power hockey cup. So they, they have their own tournament and it's, uh, Basically, between Canada and the United States, it started back in 2004, the Power Hockey Cup. And this is the eighth installment of the 2018 version, which took place between July 10th and July 13th. And again, as a reminder, if you missed the posts that we set up on our Facebook and Twitter, July 13th happens to be my brother's birthday. It's also Indiana Jones' birthday and American Rhino, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, yes, well, it is also... The birthday, if I'm not mistaken, of uh, one Sir Patrick Stewart, who, you know, may actually be be making a return to Star Trek if rumor is to be believed, which, uh, you know, has not yet been confirmed. But we're, we're very excited about the prospect. But, uh, yeah, given that it is Patrick Stewart's birthday, uh, I guess you could call it Captain Picard Day. Captain Picard Day? Oh, uh... Yes, it's, uh, it's, it's for the children. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm a role model. <laughs> yes, you are, sir. Yes, you are. And we are pleased to have you in our lives. So thank you, Sir Patrick. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That, that was phenomenal. <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't I didn't write the dialogue or anything. I just I just grabbed it from an episode. As stated before, the American Rhino's timing is flawless. That was spectacular. And that was more surprising than if somebody just blindsided me into the boards. That was phenomenal. Considering you live alone, that would be very surprising. <laughs> I would be concerned if that happened. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yes. So, yeah, July 13th, it's, it's some very, very, very special people, and, and it's a wonderful day. But that's when the Power Hockey Cup culminated this year. So congratulations to the Philadelphia Power Play for winning the tournament with a perfect 6-0 and record. Then again, seriously, everyone involved in this great tournament is truly, truly a winner. And all teams, all participants, players people running it, and, and the whole deal, just really fantastic. And we can even put links to our Facebook page and Twitter if you're interested in the uh, power hockey world with the rules, and they have their own website and, and stuff. And even they devoted an entire Facebook page to the Power Hockey Cup itself. 
So that's really cool too. So please, by all means, check that out, support them. It's really wonderful. And uh, they themselves devoted some special thanks to wonderful people involved, including Beth, the stats chick Lebowski. Would that, and, would she be the dudette? Yeah, exactly. I mean, she already has a great, a fantastic nickname, but uh, the dudette would definitely be worthy of this wonderful woman as well, as she's been keeping statistics for over 15 years in the wheelchair hockey league, including the 2018 tournament. And for some reason or another, there was a team known as the Minnesota Saints mm-hmm. who did something that wasn't very saintly, but for you'll like this, the American Rhino, they listed every player as a goalie really? on their roster. How does that work? I don't know, but uh, God bless Beth for figuring that out and, and keeping tabs on what happened during that game. And uh, they even mentioned that themselves. So she's looking to retire. She said that that was probably her last tournament, but we want to get as many likes for that Facebook page post which we even tried to help out on the hit the deck side. So that would probably convince the lovely stats chick to stay on for another season or two, because uh, someone with that good a heart and that generous at least deserves to be thanked like that. And uh, hopefully she could stick around and, and just see all the good that she's done as well. Yeah. If you want to check that out and you haven't seen it already yet, go to our Facebook page, Facebook.com slash hit the deck. And, uh, you know, it, it should be one of the recent posts that, that's right there for your perusal. Yes, sir. Thank you. And uh, the other great assist goes to Jake Hartline for the Power Hockey Cup as he helped out with graphics and uh, score update posts as well. So uh, he was a former player, as a matter of fact. And that just goes to show you how close knit these wonderful players and it's a family, I guess of uh, players and and people involved and referees and whatever else. So it's really fascinating. It's wonderful. It's the beauty of sport, specifically hockey, that doesn't matter what you have. You could make whatever you're dealt with in life. And and, and kind of speaking through experience too, in a little way in my world, but uh, sometimes you got to make lemonade out of lemons and, and these great, great heroes are examples of that. And it's just nothing but great stuff. It's a family affair. It's a family affair. I don't really know the lyrics, but I know the guy sings down here and kind of does a little rap right there. Ramble, ramble, God knows something. It's a family affair. It's a family affair. All right, I'm done. <laughs> well, thank you. That was fantastic. Yeah, I, I disagree, but, uh, you know, to each their own. <laughs> well... Speaking of family affairs, uh, you know, uh, yeah, he, he's a friend of the podcast, but uh, as we said before many a time that the world of hockey and specifically ball hockey, deck hockey, we're like one big happy family. So Mr. Kevin Frost, this generous, wonderful guy talking about being generous and, and gracious, he has the 2018 summer shootout being lined up for at the recording of this podcast this Saturday, July 21st. In North Carolina. Yes, tomorrow as this podcast drops. Yes, sir. So as we've said before, we were trying to help out with the promotion of the summer shootout. And they have a full roster. So all 20 teams are involved somehow or other. Kevin and and his friends over there at, at the Raleigh Street Hockey League put it all together and set it all up. And Stan Gilliland posted it on Facebook. So they're ready to go. Uh, Hopefully the weather cooperates. Everybody has a great time. Everybody stays safe and has fun. And it's basically 12 hours of hockey, which doesn't get any better than that, of of 12 hours of ball hockey. It's phenomenal. Yeah, Kevin's been very good to us here at Hit the Deck. And and we just, you know, any way we can return the favor, uh, we want to help him out. So really, it you know, if you we've talked about this before on the pod. But they have a lot of their games and and their tournaments posted on their YouTube channel for uh, the Raleigh Street Hockey League. So if you want to see some real quality deck hockey, go go check that out. And of course, as always, play by play is provided by Mr. Daniel Wilson, and he does a great job of doing that. So really, it's it, it's very entertaining. It's competitive hockey. And it's worth a watch. So 
watch out. It's, it's going to be coming up on their, their channel, this tournament. If you can't be there in person, definitely check it out on their channel. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, another great friend of the podcast, Gary, please, if you wouldn't mind introducing this wonderful guy. Lou. Well done, sir. Yes, that's right. Mr. Lou Harviton and his Charlotte Street Hockey is well represented in this tournament. They will be sending five teams to compete in the summer shootout. So there's Lou's own Jesters, mm -hmm. along with the Firebirds, Panthers B and Panthers C, and the Wolverines. As somebody who's played in a tournament with a team with the same name, just differentiated by color, I guess, uh, you know, I'm in a glass house here and I shouldn't be throwing stones, but... Uh, you can't come up with a better name than Panthers B and Panthers C. Come on. Well, I think, and I'm, I'm sure that Lou has explained this to us too, but my brain damage, I've forgotten. But, uh, no, I, I think... know. It's their traveling team, and it's just split in half. I get that. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, yeah. like flip a coin, rock, paper, scissors, something. One of you gets to be the Panthers, and the other one's like the Jaguars or the Pumas or something. Come on. <laughs> Fair enough. And, yeah, I, I, because there's an A division b division and a c division but that that's fair enough and you're not wrong american rhino so well i could be wrong but i'm gonna contest the point anyway okay well something to consider but the rshl has six teams so they are not to be outdone and that's led by the thunder joining them are the mckessels the whalers ball of duty border patrol and raleigh horde see six teams six names i'm just saying fair enough and uh, that that's that's fantastic. Speaking of names, I, I do I admit I love some of these team names. They're just really clever and and, and great. But I have to admit, man, and, and no offense to my wonderful friends Kevin Frost and Lou Harbiton, but the Deeks of Hazard, man, I, I, I that's my favorite show of all time. And as a matter of fact, uh, way back when I think in episode thirty-one of Hit the Deck, we used the term the Decks of Hazard. We but, definitely uh, did, yes. Yeah, so so I, I got to root for these guys and gals. It, it's that's just great. The, the Deeks of Hazard, I love that. They are from North Carolina as well in Wilmington, and their league is known as the WBHA. I would also love to see if if possible if there's footage of uh, you know by Dan Wilson and company if the Deeks of Hazard if all their jerseys are orange and they're all number <laughs> 01. That would be awesome too. Confusing it's, though, I would think. Mm, Trip maybe, but uh, it's it's three on three, so you know, I think it could work out okay. Would they like? Uh, would their names on the back be like Bo and Luke, and you would know better than I? Daisy, I guess potentially. Yeah, yeah. you know Daisy what? Deke? That, Daisy Deke. Daisy Deke. Well, as, as long as the guys aren't wearing Daisy Dukes, maybe if the girls wouldn't uh, mind. But... E, okay, you <laughs> yeah, just um... you just put an image in my head that I didn't need. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. <laughs> but, uh, at least not the goalie. But um, yeah. anyhow, yeah. Well, maybe they could use the license plates like uh, the General Lee is CNH 320. And uh, I believe Daisy's is FC 613 or something like that. So okay. I'm sure they could figure it out. <laughs> I, I will take your word for that. That is that is a, a level of, of devotion and minutia that I – can only hope to replicate with things like Star Trek and Mystery Science Theater 3000. So I, I understand, but uh, I'll take your word for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I think it was FCH 6 or thing. But I, I don't want to, don't, don't quote me on that if I'm wrong. I'm, I apologize. But anyway, uh, yeah, so th that, that's one of the best names I've seen, the Deeks of Hazard. So um, again, I got to root for those guys. So that, that's really cool. The other amazing thing about this, which is very impressive, as we've said in, in, tournaments past as Lou talked about with his tournament that he just had the summer slapper recently that teams come from all around the country to participate and the RSHL has said that too and Kevin has been a guest on this podcast a couple of times that teams as far as Pennsylvania come to compete in these tournaments in North Carolina which is amazing so you have the Mash Hounds B and C they're from Virginia Lou Earns have, man Lou Earns. You have uh, the Trump Monkeys and LaGrange are from Georgia. And more on LaGrange in a minute. And the Velvet Lions and Hark's Place are from Pennsylvania. So really, that's that's astounding. 
mm-hmm. and me- very impressive too. Uh, that just I think that speaks to how much fun these these tournaments are. So uh, maybe if we get our acts together and we get the elite of the LIQ, maybe we could send a team down or there. Which you know Kevin definitely did officially invite us, as did Lou in his tournament as well. But um, we appreciate that. So. Once we get the, the the good players out there, maybe we could get represented out uh, one day. I have to assume the, uh, that's because they've never actually seen us play. Yeah, I, uh, especially the A division. I, um, you know, speaking for myself, I wouldn't even set foot on the same deck as those players. I think in in our case, the A would stand for, and there's another goal. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, but um, and and as Gary was saying too, that's you can see for yourself with the YouTube page of the Raleigh Street Hockey League, how good these players are. Also, getting back to LaGrange. How, 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 how. Thank you, sir. Perfect. There are five cities, at least five cities that I was able to Google in the United States named LaGrange. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, and and this was thanks to this tournament. I didn't know that there was a LaGrange, Georgia. There's a LaGrange, New York, apparently. I live in the state, had no idea. Obviously, the one in Texas, because that's the ZZ Top song, and Kentucky as well. It, it seems like there are more cities named LaGrange than there are lines in that song. <laughs> yeah. And kind of coming back full circle, too, when Gary and I were talking about our last podcast, when, when Gary treated us to the Brooklyn Cyclones game on the 4th of July, they have a player named LaGrange, <laughs> but he didn't come up to the song. Yeah, well, we talked about that. There was actually yeah. another player on the Cyclones that had a ZZ Top song. And, Sharp, uh, yes. Yeah, yes, yes. And so we kind of, or I, I postulated that perhaps they have a strict one ZZ Top song limit, and perhaps that player had seniority. <laughs> yeah, that makes the most sense. And then again, yeah, just to, to put a cap on the summer shootout, which again he is this Saturday. He didn't even have a nice beard. True. Disappointing. Yeah, exactly. Although I guess I guess at some point it, it will interfere with the play, you know. <laughs> like, uh, although if you could throw the beard out in front of you, you could probably add an extra, you know, couple inches onto your uh, to, to, to be safe. That's to, true. To yeah. For the bag. <laughs> Right? And diving for a bag or mm-hmm. even for trying to catch the ball. Maybe <laughs> if you make your beard thick enough and maybe put some <laughs> hairspray in it. it in the beard. You, you got an assist. <laughs> uh, maybe. Hey, uh, well, we'll see. Hey, you know what? That's a good idea. If I could grow a beard, maybe, which obviously in, in playoff hockey, that's legendary, which started back with the Islanders. But uh, maybe I could use that as an extra defensive blocker if uh, getting in the way of a shot. So the beard would probably help out there too. Although I think they play most of their games at night. So the sunglasses would probably, uh, you know, be a detriment to their, their ability to catch the ball and, and, and see when they're batting. So, you know, pros and cons. There you go. And, uh, and yeah, so again, the summer shootout, the Raleigh Street Hockey League will uh, put links up on our Facebook page and Twitter accounts. It's this Saturday, July 21st. If you're listening to this podcast in time and best of luck, everybody to Kevin and, and everybody organizing it. And, and again, trying to sorry to uh, not pick sides here, but best of luck to Lou and your crew as well. Indeed. And uh, but bottom line, seriously, everybody be healthy, play well, have fun and enjoy. Yeah, man, that's that's the important thing. Obviously, it's the fact, like you said, the fact that so many people are coming from all around the country to come and play in this thing. It's kind of a big deal. And, you know, if everybody comes and nobody has fun, then what's the point? So definitely everybody have fun, be safe, be sporting, you know, remember why you're there. Don't, don't go crazy. And, and I, I mean, I've, I've seen, I remember, I think the last tournament, which I guess was the Ironman tournament that they had. I remember watching a game and seeing one guy from one team. I don't remember what team it was, but I remember one guy took like three boarding penalties at least in the game. And it's like at some point, you know, just why are you even here? Like, you know, it's not it's not about that. It's about having fun. Yes, we're all competitive. I'm going to get down off my soapbox in a minute, I promise. But, yeah, we all want to be competitive. We all want to win. But, you know, it's 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 a game. It's fun. Don't hurt people. Don't like don't be a jerk. 
don't be that guy, you know, in, in the name of winning a game. Just do your best. Don't don't, you know, try and take out the other team. Just just play a clean game. Yeah, as a matter of fact, if I remember correctly, I think the Firebirds may have won the uh the Iron Man this year, but again, we were watching thanks to the feed on their Facebook page, but when they won and gosh, I don't know how exhausting it must it must have been to play in that tournament and forget about winning it, but they were they didn't really celebrate. They they won the tournament. They endured and they they got to the final and they won it and it was spectacular. And they didn't even celebrate. You know, they like dropped their sticks and and congratulated the opposing team first and and then kind of just went about their business. If if that were me, if I had any any ounce of energy left, I would have been doing cartwheels and jumping around like an idiot. But act like uh, you've so, been there, James. Yeah, exactly. So they did. So. The winner, and apologies if that wasn't the, the proper team that won the, the Ironman, but really that, that was very well done. And the final thing about the summer shootout for now are the shirts look phenomenal, yep. by the way. So well done there, Kevin Frost. Yeah, we got a sneak preview uh, because we're special people. <laughs> we, know, <laughs> we know people who can hook us up with, uh, well, a picture at least. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so yes. The shirts do look great, and you know, kudos to you, Kevin, for cranking out something that's that's going to be something that people will be proud to wear. And I, I don't know if it's the same shirts, but I know they will be selling a limited amount of merch, like special uh, tournament specific shirts as well. So those look good. You're going to want to get your hands on those. So uh, if you're in the tournament, bring some cash is what I'm saying. Yeah, and they're really – I love that Carolina blue, I believe it's called, that light blue mm. and those shirts. So well done, really classy, and the sponsors on the back are really cool as well. And uh, we're going to get into that in the final segment, as a matter of fact, one of the wonderful sponsors of the, the tournament. Indeed. Indeed, sir. And that tournament sponsor that we are going to talk about is uh, Hagen Hockey who is, if you're not aware, uh, we've mentioned them before on the podcast, but Hagen Hockey is a, well, I, I say a website because they have a website, and I guess that's where they chiefly do their commerce out of, but Hagen Hockey is a seller which caters to the ball hockey, deck hockey set. I mean, I, I think they sell some like uh, roller hockey stuff and maybe ice hockey stuff as well and some lacrosse gear, but it is a place to go if you want ball hockey equipment, which is not something that is sold very prevalently, very commonly here, at least here in the United States. Uh, most of the gear, the hockey gear that you're going to get is going to be your roller hockey or your ice hockey. And there is some like deck specific stuff or, or street specific gear, but it's generally pretty low quality. Not always, but Generally, it is. So this is like high quality stuff that's not that expensive that is meant for deck hockey. So um, hopefully we're going to get the Hagen Hockey guys on the pod sometime in the near future to talk about their wares. But I want to talk specifically about something that I had a chance to kind of get my hands on and use. And uh, so we're going to dip into the gear bag, and I'm going to talk a little bit about goalie shoes, goalie sneakers. Now, full disclosure, the goalie sneakers that they have on the site are not the exact model that I got because my, uh, my feet are a little too big. Uh, apparently, the, I, I wear size 13, and the website only has up to size 11, so they had to special order something for me. But, Show off. Yeah, well, okay, yeah, but but look, that's the kind of customer service that Hagen Hockey provides. They will, you know, they, they my feet did not fit their wares, so they special ordered something for me so that I could have goalie deck hockey sneakers and I could use them. And you know, like they they set me up is what I'm saying. So do yourself a favor and go over to that site and check out what they have. So I'm um, I'm sure. I'm sure if you need something, if, if, if you need for them to work with you, they will be happy to do so. But uh, so that caveat out of the way, uh, it, it is more or less the same product, uh, if, if slightly different. But 
So I'm holding it. I'm holding it up as if you can see it on this audio podcast. I will try and paint a picture with my words so you can see it in your mind's eye. I'm holding a sneaker. It is gray. This one, I, I don't believe the, they may have a selection of colors. I don't recall, but I don't believe that, I don't know if gray is one of them, honestly, but the, the color is not really relevant. I mean, you may care about the color, but really we're not here to talk about what color the sneakers are. You know, go to Foot Locker or go to some kind of, you know, go to a sneaker podcast if you really care about high fashion in that regard. But uh, for me, it's all about the functionality. So the thing I will say about these is uh, two things jump out at me about these sneakers. Aside from the fact that they are, you know, specially made as goalie sneakers. And I will explain what that means in a minute. So they're so light. Like I put them on. See, let me let me take you back to last Saturday before I played hockey. I had put on my the sneakers that I have worn in the past I've been wearing and if you wanted to see how I prepared those sneakers for deck hockey which was not their original purpose they were I think like cross training sneakers or something you can go to our YouTube channel which is hit the deck podcast on YouTube and I have a video where I show you how I put the the toe protection on there and how I stitched on the like can't not canvas it, it's like a kind of a rubberized material it's called rubber duck but how i stitched on loops so i could thread my straps through but i didn't need to do that with these so these so saturday i was wearing those old old sneakers which have given me problems ever since i got them because i think they were defective in some way because the the rubber sole the treads on the bottom of them from the first time I wore them, they started coming off and I had to re-glue them almost every week. And it was really tedious. So I was really looking forward to getting my hands on these sneakers from Hagen Hockey. It's made, or at least I anticipate going forward, that it will make my life so much easier. But um, so Saturday, I leave my house to, uh, to, to go play hockey. And sitting right in front of my front door is uh, this, this package. This package containing these sneakers that I had ordered a few weeks ago. And uh, I was like, hey, that's perfect timing. <laughs> so I grabbed them. I threw them in my bag. I went to play hockey. I changed when I was there. And uh, so, yeah, my first impression of these, they are so light. It's like I'm wearing nothing. Uh, I mean, it's, I, I don't, I, they're not uncomfortable. They, they do take a little getting used to because they are light and they are very thin and flexible. So they're not as stiff and as, as, as I guess, sturdy in the, the boot part of the sneaker. So one thing I did notice when I was wearing them is that my pads kind of grated against the end of my foot a little bit. And I'm sure that's something that I'll get used to. And I'm sure that's something that once I kind of break them in won't be as noticeable. But that is something to be aware of. You can feel the pad against the sneaker or, or against your foot because they are so thin. I was worried that I was going to get some blisters because they are so thin and they kind of, the the top, the boot part is thin. The bottom is is very thick and hard because, you know, it's a, it's a sneaker and it has to be sturdy. So I was a little worried that I would get blisters on my feet. I didn't. That was a boundless concern. Um, so I, you know, I, I was happy about that. They, they weren't terribly uncomfortable that, you know, they're, they're sneakers, whatever. They're not, you know, the lap of luxury. It's not like I'm wearing slippers, but they're functional. So I'm sure once I break them in, they will feel better like with any shoe, you know? And the other thing is they lace actually lower down than most sneakers that I've worn. It's almost like, um, kind of a loafer where you slip it on. And then it's, it actually, that's not a bad description because whereas most sneakers have like a kind of a separation and a tongue at the top, these don't, they're all one piece. And I just slip my foot in them. And then there are laces about mm, two thirds of the way up the sneaker that I used to tighten, but it's not like there's no slits. It's, it's just, it's all one piece, which is, uh, you know, fine. Yes, James. Is that to compensate for the pad? I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, maybe. I don't know why it is like that, but it is. They, they look just 
In terms of their visual profile, they look like running sneakers to me, which is not surprising because, you know, I mean, goalieing aside, you for just deck hockey in general, you, you run. So the fact that they are running sneaker profiled, if that's even a word, I don't know. And they're light, like uh, running sneakers usually are. I, I guess because goalies wear so much gear as it is, they wanted to make it as light as possible so that you can move quickly, which is nice. But the thing that really kind of makes them goalie sneakers, you know, whatever. The, the things that I've described so far, they're just interesting sneakers. You know, they're, they're, but the thing that makes them goalie shoes is the treads. The treads are very interesting. I'll put a picture of these on our Instagram so you can check us out on Instagram and hit the deck. But I will try and describe it for you. The treads are deep. So I'd say it's about an inch worth of tread or so, maybe an inch and a half at the back. But they're deep. So the grooves that would normally be very shallow uh, kind of grooves on the bottom of a sneaker, they're like half an inch deep. So you, the idea is you take the laces of your pad and oh, they're also not solid. So they have, uh, they have like, they're connected, but the connections between the grooves are, are much thinner. So you can thread the laces through them in the kind of the grooves, in the trenches, so you don't rip them up. And that way they hold tight to the bottom of your sneaker as if you were tying them down to a skate. And you can thread them through the whole thing. And at the middle, uh, or middle-ish, maybe slightly to the back of middle, there is a spot where you can thread the strap, the, the kind of the bottom strap through, which would normally go under you know, the between the blade and the boot of the skate, but you can run it through the sneaker without, you know, so it, it it's not scraping the ground. It's just kind of in the middle of the sneaker and you can tighten it down to your foot. And I found that it, it like the pads, de it definitely delivered. The pads stayed. I mean, I usually kind of tape the strap down and, and the laces down to my sneakers using shin guard tape which works but i didn't need to this time i just i threaded it through i tightened it off and it held you know when i moved my foot the pad moved which is how it's supposed to be and I, you know so it's going to take me a few more weeks of using them to get really get used to them uh, and kind of probably get the best out of them but for now i'm really pleased with how they perform and i'm uh, i'm very glad i i had the opportunity to get them so hagen hockey thank you very much for uh, hooking me up with these and i i look forward to many many games worth of play out of them so uh you know if you are looking if you're a goalie or if you're a skater and you're looking for some deck specific gear you know head over to hagenhockey.com and they will hook you up last minute remaining in the podcast thank you pops and uh i just you know thank you Dear listener, for joining us, for, for spending another episode of Hit the Deck in our company. We sincerely appreciate it. Thank you to Pops for being the voice of the podcast. Thank you to the birthday boy, Anthony Sejazi, for providing us with music. And thank you to the LIQ for sound effects used in this podcast. Thank you to Hagen Hockey. Thank you to Kevin Frost, Lou, everyone who has supported this podcast in one way or the other. We sincerely appreciate your, uh, you know, well, it's redundant, but your support that, uh, you know, and we wouldn't be able to do this podcast without the support of many, many, many people and, and specifically you, dear listener. So if you'd like to get in touch with us for whatever reason, we would encourage you to do so. You can email us at hitthedeck at gmail.com. You can tweet at us at hitthedeckpod. Deck is D-E-K, of course. Hit the deck pod at uh, well, Twitter, I guess it's not an at it's well, it's an at, but it's not at hit the deck at it. You know how Twitter works, whatever. <laughs> I'm over explaining this. We are at hit the deck pod on Twitter, on Instagram and Facebook. We are at hit the deck and you can check out the pictures of the goalie sneakers that I got on Instagram, as well as uh, the, the wrestling picture that we posted and, and a whole bunch of other things that we have posted in the past. You know, go check that out. That's fun times. 
And uh, if you want to subscribe to this podcast, we would really appreciate it if you did that. You can do so by just, you know, subscribing on Apple Podcast or Stitcher or uh, Podbean app or I guess, um, what is it, Google Podcast now for Android. And, uh, you know, lots of places. We are lots of places. We are the world here on Hit the Deck and, and we're there for you. And of course, YouTube. We have a bunch of stuff on our YouTube channel that you might find interesting. It would really, really benefit us if you would subscribe to us there as well. And if you're feeling extra generous, please consider leaving us a review of some stripe on iTunes. That would help us out immeasurably. I mean that sincerely. We would really deeply appreciate it if you could take five minutes out of your day and review us on iTunes. It would uh, it would do us a huge solid and, and we would be be quite grateful for that. Um, James, is there anything you'd care to add? Yeah, just uh, again, thank you for taking the American Rhino's advice and giving us feedback. We appreciate it. We had some good feedback from our last podcast and thank you for checking out our YouTube channel and so on and so forth. So please keep it up and please spread the word. We'd appreciate it. Again, don't forget the 2018 summer shootout is Saturday, July 21st in North Carolina. If you're around, check it out or just wait for the uh, updates on their YouTube page when you can see the games for yourself. So good luck, Kevin Frost of the Raleigh Street Hockey League and, of course, Lou of Charlotte Street Hockey and everybody else participating as well. As Gary said, too, if you need some gear, go check out HagenHockey.com and All Black Hockey Sticks as well. They are both sponsors of the 2018 Summer Shootout, by the way. And uh, thanks for listening. Yes, sir. Thank you ever so much. And uh, as always, I would like to just leave you with this particular sentiment. And that is uh, whether you are taking in some body slams with your buddy or uh, motoring in the face of adversity, whether you are out there competing in a high level tournament or just breaking in some new gear, regardless of what you happen to be doing, I would encourage you always to remember it's deck hockey. Don't be that guy. Thanks, everybody. The more YouTube subscriptions we get, the better we can do things, the better things we can, we can better our things, all the things, all the things, things. <laughs> I'm a professional.